Alright, so there's plenty of these settings for you to look at. I do recommend you browse them at your leisure. And whatever doesn't make sense, there, there's often a little bit of a question mark. And then of course, uh, next, next time when we come back, if you, as you use this and you've written down questions, be sure to ask next time and we can come back to it. Um, on, on deck for next week is Pinterest. Remember, we're covering one network per day, but I can go back and forth to different networks. And whatever you learn on one network can apply to some degree on the other ones. Well, let's cover something right now here that definitely is applicable to all the networks. I've got this page that right now I don't have any followers, I don't have any likes, I don't have anyone looking at it. I invited 12 of my friends and maybe that maybe got lost in the mail, but they haven't replied yet. So we need to talk about then reaching more of an audience. Uh, I'm going to put it in the notes here. The big secret to getting more followers, customers, is paying for them. And that might be anticlimactic, but that's, that's the truth. That works in the real world. I've said before that billboard is not free, that radio ad is not free. All of that marketing in the real world is not free, but it works. The more people know about you, the more likely they are then to go to your restaurant, to call you up, etc. It also then is something for the digital world. So tangibly right here, I'll show you how you can do this in, in Facebook. But basically, the, the big idea is we're going to pay Facebook or Twitter or Pinterest some amount of money and it could be very very low one dollar five dollars we're gonna pay these networks some amount of money so that our content reaches the right people because the old days was that a like was a follow on your page therefore the people who liked your page would see all your newest posts. I have seven followers. I have seven people that have liked my page. They've followed my page. All seven of them, when I post something new <coughs> in their own home screen, they would see a new message that says, you know, Victor's Bakery shared this. Here's a coupon. Here's 10% off. Here's our sale. So in the old days, a like was like basically agreeing that, yes, I want to see all of the stuff you're posting. Nowadays, even the people that have liked your page probably won't see your posts anymore. Um, all of those seven followers that I had, all of those 70 followers that I have, I don't know the exact number, but most of them won't see your posts anymore. The reason for that is Facebook has said to the consumer, we know that people want to connect with people. You're on Facebook because you want to connect with your friends and family. Therefore, we won't really push ads on you from businesses. You don't care about businesses, you care about friends and family. Well, that sounds good for the person, like, okay, yeah, I don't want to see stuff from businesses, I want to see from friends and family, that's why I'm on Facebook. Well, that obviously sounds terrible for us as a business. Someone has chosen, they've liked Victor's Bakery so much, they had a great experience, they did click like on my Facebook, and yeah, I want to see what you're sharing, I want to see your tasty photos, I want to see your coupons. But Facebook says, no, no, you actually don't. You want to see your friends and family stuff. But guess what? Us as a business, we have a way to reach those people again by paying to reach those people. So that's part of the double-edged sword. That's the last strike I will give for Facebook today to really reach the customers. Even the ones that said, yes, I like your page and I want to follow it, they won't see your page. And I don't know, no one quite knows what the, what the percentage is. It's a trade secret. No one knows that if I've got... 
10 followers, one will see it. If I've got 1,000 followers, 99 will see it. No one knows what that value is, except those that work at Facebook and have signed an NDA. And they'll get sued into oblivion if they reveal it. So we have to assume a very low number, and I would not be surprised if it's like 10% or lower of those that have followed you are actually going to see your posts. What's 10% of 100 uh, followers? 10. So I thought I had 100 people following me. Only 10, maybe probably 3, are going, to se are going to see it. So I'm posting every day 7 times on Facebook. No one is seeing it, or a very low percentage. The fix is that you pay Facebook to have more people see it. And again, that sounds perhaps the first time you hear it, well, that sounds shady, and that sounds bait and switch, and that sounds annoying and terrible, and how convenient, <coughs> how convenient that I have to pay to reach people. Yes, just like in the real world, that billboard wasn't free. That ad on TV wasn't free. Those, bill, uh, those um, flyers you put on people's windshields were not free. Even if you use the, you know, the company's copier, uh, you shouldn't do that. Um, that stuff wasn't free. So it's not free anymore on social media for a business to reach an audience. But as I said, it can be very affordable. And I'll show you exactly how to Does set that this apply up. For pages as well as pages? Yeah. And does that apply for personal pages or not? Uh, personal, um, not quite, because that, that's their point again about a person is connected to a person on Facebook. So yeah, you want to see the latest cat picture. But for businesses, Facebook, and anything not a person, basically, uh, that's the problem that we do have to pay to reach the audience, no matter what kind of page we are besides a person. So at least... <coughs> The cost to entry can be very low. I have to confirm, but I believe it's as little as one dollar. And the reach can be very far. You can pick the right people very easily. I'll, demo I'll demonstrate that right now, but that's the idea. Um, I have a bakery. So people that are interested in my product are those that I want to see my posts. I don't want to just throw my message out there to the world and maybe someone will see it and care. No, I want to put my message exactly in front of the people that would care most about organic ingredients, local San Diego parents that have a birthday coming up for their child. I want to target exactly people that are going to have a birthday soon. <clears throat> I want to target people that are out-of-towners. They're visiting San Diego for the first time. I can know this, and I can access this. So again, these networks know a lot about us. As a consumer, I don't like that. As a business, I love that. And let's see how we can take advantage of it. One way, two main ways. One way is boosting an existing post or to creating an advanced ad. I'll look at both, but I think boosting is often the best one to show first. The basic idea, create a post that shows your product, then boost it to reach the right people. Boosting is the code word for paying to reach the right people. As, again, as I said, a dollar, five dollars, could work. Uh, Facebook will gladly take as much money as you want to give it to reach more people. But you can get started with, you know, the cost of a latte to reach, to start reaching people. Uh, do they, do they automatically take whatever amount of people cap? You can cap it, definitely. You can say, I only want to spend this month $10, and it'll stop it at that point. All right, so the way we do this, I've got this page here. Nothing is, in, nothing is really set up about it, but I'll use it as the example. I'm on Vic, my Victor's Bakery page. I've got the spot here to add a photo, write a note. So I can create content just like every other network, uh, depending on your... Uh, type of business. You may have more options like me or not. 
Uh, this is another thing. I just did a demo of this um, at a conference in Sacramento, and some people were saying, um, I don't see as many options as you. Uh, I don't quite have an answer for that. It seems to depend on a variety of factors. It seemed to be that if the page um, was too new, it didn't have all of these features. Obviously, I just created this page right now. But my main account has existed for years. So if you don't see all of these possible items here, it might be because it's not new. I mean, it's too new. It doesn't have enough likes. It might possibly have to do with the type of business you set up. I set it up as a, as a business instead of as a community. So if you don't see as many of these as me, don't quite worry about that. That's not what I'm getting at. But let's say I'm going to create something here. Uh, sale, um, you know, visit us this weekend and um, tell us the secret word cookies and you can get a free snickerdoodle and 10% off your next purchase. This we will have more practice as we go through the networks about creating the actual content. But this is an art and a science. What do I write? How do I write? Remember the style guide. Am I going to be fun, witty, funny, serious, stoic? I, I cannot teach one answer for that to 30 people. I'm just picking for this business. This is how we communicate. And I'm going to attach a photo, or I'm going to attach a, a, um, directions, or something. I'm going to uh, add a poll, or whatever. I'm going to post a link to my site. And uh, at the bottom, I've got boost and publish. What I wrote here, create a post, then boost it. You can boost it as you're creating it, but I don't recommend you do that because if you go to this boost page, it'll take you to a different interface. And if your computer suddenly crashes, you've lost all the work you've done here because you were in the middle of boosting to do another activity. So I would recommend you create your post, you actually publish it, and then you have the option to then boost it. I like this a little better because this one now is there. It's out there to the world. If the computer crashes, no big deal. This is public. This is published. I can then come back and go through the interface I'm about to show you to boost. So it's sort of like balancing too many plates. In the middle of creating the post, I'm then also going to boost it. I don't, I don't recommend that. So publish it first, then boost it. This is a terrible post, I admit. It, it's not that interesting. There's no picture. There's nothing there. But just to show you the important part of it, boosting the post. I get this interface where I have a bunch of things to fill in. The big one is audience. I have here already a variety of audiences I've created, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But here's exactly picking ages and regions and topics and such. I'll, I'll expand up upon it in a moment. Budget. Here it's saying, okay, for twenty dollars, twenty dollar budget. Um, depending on how many days you want to run this, let's say fourteen days. Ooh, I got a like here from Grant Williams. Thank you. Um, this is saying, in fourteen days, I want to spend up to twenty dollars. Facebook will use its technology to reach somewhere between 140 and 830 people per day to show them my message. It's going to say Victor's Bakery, sponsored, blah, blah, blah. Whatever you, whatever great post, whatever great ad you create will be shown to that amount of people. This is not guaranteeing you're going to get 140 sales. This is not guaranteeing you're going to get 140 clicks. This is not guaranteeing <laughs> anything except visibility. But that's as much as I can ask for that billboard. 10,000 people saw it, I got two calls. 500 people uh, heard me on the radio, I got 300 calls. All of these advertising platforms in the real world can only guarantee you exposure, not results. So Facebook and all social media is no different. But here it's saying, 
140 to 830 people that would care most about your product based on the audience, which I'll get back to, will at least see your post. It's still up to you to craft a great message with a great deal, with a great photo to really, you know, you're baiting the hook here, but you still have to put the bait to actually get the fish. And so in 14 days, this amount of people will see it. Approximately $1.42 will be spent. What does that mean? It just means approximately this amount of people will see it per day for 14 days. If I only want to do it for one day, okay, 2,700 to 15,000 people today, 24 hours, will, will see your message. Uh, conversions, I'll get back to that. And of course, you need a credit card, debit card, whatever built into it so that it can charge you. Budgets here can be set to, okay, yeah, Facebook will gladly take $1,500 and in two weeks show it from 12,000 to 73,000 people. And okay, now I want to choose my own. Uh, how about a dollar? Sure, 100 people to 580 people for one day. I want to do it for two weeks. Well, it's got to be at least one dollar per day, so you need at least fourteen dollars. But if you want a quick boost, a quick post, a quick blast of visibility, I think I have a dollar under the couch. So I can spend one dollar to reach this amount of people, which may result in one sale. Is one sale out of a out of five hundred and eighty bad? No, I spent a dollar to get one sale, and hopefully my product is worth more than a dollar to break even. So even that amount is great. Yeah. How does that dollar amount compare to, like, say, a billboard? I can't say. It depends on your product. It depends on where the billboard is. It depends on so many factors. Why was there more um, for one day than there were for 14 as far as the number of people who see it? There was there were more people on one day uh, because uh, your whole budget gets used up uh, faster here. It gets spread out on several days. So in order for those five, is there an advantage? No, some of these things it really benefits you to try different things. For the cost of it, I'm going to try. Well, this week I'm going to spend five dollars on one day. Next month, I'm going to spend $5 for 14 days. And this is going to gather a bunch of data for you to then make a decision for the next step. And the data is going to be under insights. And over a period of time, they also have the same people again. It's all the new people each day. Yeah, it tries to use its technology to best show it to the right people. It may be the same person three times because it identifies this person seems to be leaning toward caring about your product. That's good. If it's using, if it's choosing brand new people every single time, it might not be as effective. So this is one of those trade secrets that I don't know, no one knows except who works at the company, how exactly we reach the people. But I can tell you anecdotally from clients that I work with, it does work. Even on very low budgets, it does work. They get more sales, they get more calls. You spend more, you get more, just like in the real world. So, how do we know they aren't just popping the money and laughing all the way to the bank and not sending anything out? They know because um, I can show the examples of the clients in their, in their cash register that when we were not boosting posts, they were making certain sales. When we did boost posts, they, made, they had a bump in sales. We can also see the, the data over here under insights that, you know, I do have to trust the company, but then I see it here that it is reaching people on this day and time and, and so forth. So the ultimate uh, way to prove it's working or not is to see what is your, uh, you know, method of determining your success. How many calls did I get this month compared to last month? Last month I didn't boost, this month I did. It probably relates. Yes. <coughs> So in those 14 days, is it however many uh, posts you make, it'll send out there, or is it like one post? It's this one post. There's, there's another screen where you can kind of bundle together various posts in a campaign, but the simple way that I'm doing it here is this one post that I made, this one <coughs> boost, 
in the other screen that I'll show, I can create use these seven boosts, set, use these seven posts, and you figure out to spread it out to the right people. Facebook, that is, we'll figure that out. Right now, I'm doing it the simple way, just one, one post. I have one yeah. quick question: is, is there a rule of thumb on how much you should spend on your marketing budget? How much you got? <laughs> how much you spend? Okay. That happens on every industry. So uh, yeah, it really is uh, how much you spend. And the great thing is it can be extremely low. So uh, I would, I do definitely, I'll write some notes here. I do recommend sort of like starting big and vague-ish and spend some amount of money. And then as you get your data, you can hone in and then know exactly how much to spend and for how much amount of time. So I, I can't really say how much. But for personally, for the various clients we work with, we're often doing like $30 a week for one month. You know, three times four, 120 a month. Not every single month. You know, $100 a month is not terrible for marketing, so it can be pretty good. So, uh, general idea start or cast a wide net, big demographic, uh, medium amount of money and time. Then as you get data, check your insights. You can focus your time and effort for better results. Right now, I don't perhaps quite know who my target audience is. So I can just start in general terms. I'll show that in a moment. And as I run this campaign for a week, as I run this boost for a week, and it gives me the data, it collects the data, I can then uh, refine it. This is what I mean about the audience. This stuff about payments and such, pretty straightforward. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to go with $5 one day. Here's the audience. Um, I've already got a few filled in here, but then I've got to create new audience. Let me show you that way. Um, the way this works is you've got, uh, you can give this a name. So let's say I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find young, uh, young families, you know, those that uh, have been married for you know, two years, they have one child and another on the way. Let's say that's who I'm going for. Again, that's related to the personas that I mentioned earlier. Who am I actually trying to target? Uh, I can target genders or, again, in the beginning, cast a wide net, all. How would I define a young family? Well, you know, you've got your age range here. I don't know, just put 20 to 30, just to choose any sort of range. There's also going to be... Um, a little meter right here that can help you. What kind of audience am I choosing? Too specific, too broad, somewhere in the middle. Okay. Um, I then go into location, add location. So I'm, I'm based in San Diego. So I want to say, I want to target people in San Diego. Uh, do you mean San Diego, California, San Diego, Texas, or San Diego, Venezuela? San Diego, California, of course. So like that. Everyone within a radius of 25 miles, 10 to 50 miles. So I would even reach people in Tijuana, Oceanside, and uh, the middle of the ocean. So people out on the, uh, on the boats. Uh, I can add more than one. Uh, I can say, OK, uh, I want to reach you know, the main city of San Diego, pretty much. And I also want to reach, reach people in um, um, Death Valley for some reason. So we've got Death Valley way over there. And um, so my ad, my Facebook post is going to be shown targeted to people in those locations. This can be refined also via zip code. So let's say I'll do it by zip code 91914. That's over there, so people in that area. Uh, I have the ability to, uh, if I don't quite know the name of the area, the zip code or whatever, I can drop a pin, <coughs> can 
click on that and say, okay, people right here. And then define that in sizes as well, one mile around there. So very targeted. Let's say I'll just keep it general San Diego. Oh, people at the airport. So it's going to depend um, what's in their system. <coughs> okay. So as I'm setting a location here, it's saying, okay, your size seems to be good. You can reach about 570,000 people. Not, that's no guarantee of 570,000 sales or anything like that. That just means a possible reach, which will then further be tempered by the other stuff I've got here based on budget and time. And here's another great thing. Detailed targeting. Include people who match at least one of the following. I like this as a browse. You can start to type or you can do browse. So here's what browse looks like you have in general. I want to further target people based on demographics, interests, or behavior. Under demographics, if I open that up, OK, I want to deal with um, life events. Um, birthdays, yeah, birthdays are coming up. Birthday month, upcoming birthday. Birthday in April, I can pick the month. Uh, let's just say upcoming birthday. So people with an upcoming birthday in San Diego, um, between 20 and 30 years old, men and women, it's telling me perhaps my audience is a little too small, 12,000. That doesn't seem small to me. I'd love to have 12,000 people looking at it. But I would try to pick a location or a targeted keyword that's a little bit more broad. I can add more than one. Let's see, people also interested. Let's see what we have. Instead, of, I type um, birthday cake. It goes up to 16,000 from 12,000. It might say a little bit. It'll let me pick whatever audience I want, but it's smart enough to know a lot of this and to guide us pretty well. So I would, I would heed it. So if you do upcoming birthdays, not going to exclude people that don't have upcoming birthdays, though, right? Or just add or target them more. I guess. Target them more exactly. Anyone in Facebook could see this post and could find this post, but here it's going to be sort of like put forward to people more likely to hit these categories. So I'll just pick something like this at the moment. Um, well, let's see what else here. Young kids, kids products, baby cares, young adults in home, um, children. If I don't know exactly what to put, we might have suggestions, families, close friends of people with birthdays in a month, let's see, families. So birthday plus family, 310,000, it says it's good. OK, I'll, I'll go with that one. You can only pick one demographic at a time. Uh, so I can only pick young families here, but not these other ones that I have set up. Well, I can, I can boost another post. I cannot use the same post to boost it to more than one audience. I'd have to have two different posts for two different audiences. They could be similar. I don't think they can be exactly the same. It will let you know. It should not be the same. It could be similar. And then so I've picked my audience, picked my budget. This is saying, this budget exceeds your account spending limit. So this is the thing again. You can easily go overboard and pay, 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 but they do have a, a spending limit that I've set, which I'm already about to reach. So it's telling me you're going to go past your limit. Just do it for a dollar. So about 120 to 530 people could see it in this one day, this audience. Got my credit card plugged in. I'm ready to, to boost it. So I'm a little confused. Why did it say, why did the chain say you were over budget? 
five dollars and you change it to one dollar. Oh, because that's how much you're spending, right? Uh, in the settings of main budgets, so I'll show that in a moment, I have some budget there, like a hundred dollars. And based on the ads I've already done, I'm about to reach that main budget. This budget for this one at five dollars was about to reach the main budget I've got of a hundred dollars. I guess you can do also cents. What about if I want to spend a dollar seventy-five? Okay, yeah, it'll do that. What's my budget here? Okay, I can go up to two ninety nine, and I won't and I won't break my budget. So um, I won't click boost because this is re uh, really set up on my account. But this is what I would do for a client. Uh, my company and I, we, uh, we talk with the owner. What, we're trying to figure out everything about them, who's their target audience, etc. Uh, we want to reach uh, more people on their current product. Uh, we sit with the client, we explain this, we say here's who we think you, you want to reach, uh, here's your budget, we put in your credit card and so forth, we do the boost. And then it goes, it goes out there. Um, Facebook does take a quick sort of machine look at it to see if it does follow the specifications about, you know, like no hate speech and all of that. But uh, then it's approved and it starts to get shown to people on their desktop or on their mobile devices. Again, uh, this is a pretty terrible one. There's no link. There's no photo. There's nothing really interesting about it. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna waste two ninety nine. Um, Does a boosted post look different to the biggest difference? Is that it, it will be marked as sponsored, sponsored. Okay. and that's because of you know truth and advertising and such. Okay. But then also the people that have liked your page, they will more, more likely see it. And all of this is also, it doesn't differentiate between people that already like your page and brand new people, unfortunately. So somewhere around here, 420 to 1500 people are going to see this. They give you the hook, but it's up to you to provide the bait in a good ad to get a result. So you're saying that's a medley of... Uh, people who already know about you and people who don't. More of a melange, but yes. <coughs> yes, a group of people that uh, based on uh, who already know you, but mostly new people. I don't have 420 connections, so it's going to be mostly new people. And there isn't a way to <coughs> target it to your followers. I think there is based on the audience you create. If you create an audience, on a, the confusing thing is that since this is the sort of quick way to do it, I'll show the more complex one in a moment, the quick way to do it, I don't quite see those that you already know, but in another screen, there is a way to, to further target those that you already know. Okay. Yeah. Did you say you would put in your credit card information or would it be the client's credit card information? To whoever is the one that's going to pay. Okay. So, so. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, perhaps I forgot how we have this set up, but probably then we have you know the company credit card plugged in, and then we we get reimbursed from the client. So I'll cancel that. It'll say, "Sure, you want to cancel?" Yeah, I want to cancel that. So that's that's the quick way to do this. Um, this is how you're going to start to get followers and likes and all of that. The, the ways of recommending your friends and being active and posting every day, that, that's not going to get you that far. Facebook actively has made it that this is the right way. That is, you know, that does sound cynical and annoying, but it, it is the way this works, just like advertising and marketing in the real world. Do, uh, on this business page, do you send out... Not necessarily friend request, but send out requests to people to, to like your page and follow it, or, or is that, is well, that's, that you can get a follow and they click the like on your page? Well, that is part of it, sending those messages out to your followers. It is also sort of like on Twitter when we did search, I can search for topics over here, birthday cakes. It's like Twitter also in terms of. I'm going to put in some legwork to go find people, and then I suggest to those people, hey, like my page, I've got something. I wouldn't really bother that way. I, I would go toward the route of boosting your content. It's much more direct and effective. They still have to click like to follow to get your 
Yeah. Well, what's the click like in there on your on your um, your list of contacts? It, whenever you send out a, a, a another post, whether it be to boosting or just in general, do they get those future posts? Um, that's still unfortunately related to even if you've already got followers and likes, they're not guaranteed to always see your content, and no one quite knows what the percentage is. So even if I paid here to, to get seven new followers, that still doesn't guarantee that all those new seven will always see your content. It's up to Facebook's algorithm and whims about what who exactly sees what, and um, that, that is annoying. That is a big downside of it. But again, having a budget for once a month, I'm going to spend five dollars. I think it's it's a very good investment. Yes. If they do see it, what does it look like? Well, the preview was there in that it's, it's over here. In my case, very boring and, and very dumb. It's going to look like that on their on their desk when they're logged into Facebook on their desktop computer. It'll look like that, which I made it completely boring. I didn't put a picture. I didn't put text. I didn't put anything meaningful. When they're on their mobile device, it's going to look like this. Again, I didn't make a very good post. They'll take my money, but I didn't really make a very good post. So, so it's not like under notifications or anything? No, it's not going directly like up here. You've got a new notification. It's going to be mixed in. Like if I go over here to my home screen, and if I look at my home screen as a person, uh, I'm going to see it around in the various areas over here. Oh. You know, it's popping up over here. It's popping up over there. It's popping up in the middle. So it's it's going to show up for people as as something that. Um, is mixed in with their content. It doesn't like directly pop up in, into their notifications and such. Maybe the next generation of it will do that eventually, but right now it's kind of a little like that. The um, this boosted method. This is the this is the um, this is the quick way to do it. Let me show you the more complex way. So uh, that's a little off topic for the moment. That's a little off topic for the moment. Okay. Let me get back to that. So um, the easier way to start off the much more powerful way to continue. On all of these posts that I've made, I can then choose to boost them to reach more people. Well, I can do it more powerfully over here. On the black triangle, uh, we have then um, ads over here. Create an ad. If I go to create ad, it takes me to a completely different interface where it's like uh, this, this area of creating campaigns. Um, putting things into groups, what kinds of ads am I creating? Over here, it's got the classic marketing funnel, awareness, consideration, conversion. So I've got this general idea of starting at this point and guiding people to this result. I want people to visit my store. I want people to, I want to make sales. I want to do other conversions. Well, again, that's easier said than done. It's, it's a lot easier to get a like a reply, a follow, suddenly I don't know how to use the mouse to click buy. Uh, we see that a lot uh, as, as companies. We can get a thousand followers, but why aren't I getting a thousand sales? So this process here is another way for it, it can, that Facebook can help you get to that result. Well, perhaps I want to do this kind of ad first to let people know I exist. I want to reach more people. Next level, okay, I want to get more traffic. I want to get engagement. I want likes and such. I want people to look at my video. All of this is leaning, guiding us toward that eventually. I want them to visit my store. I want them to buy something or other conversions. You could go directly to this one. I just want to get sales. Give me the, the short answer. Yeah, you could go directly to that. But the concept of this, of these columns, is if you go through this process from left to right, you have more of a chance of getting your final main result of a sale. So looking at it under catalog sales, 
Um, this has got to be set up with a little bit more effort. I only have one example of a client here that has actual products that they are selling. So I have to pick an item that is being sold, select it here, and then go through the further process. So I'm not going to go through far on this one for, from this client. Let's see another one here. Um, let me just do a general conversion. Get people to take valuable actions on your website, app, or in Messenger, such as adding payment info. So a conversion is a is any result, and here they're saying um, going to your website and such. You can get pretty advanced with something like A/B testing, meaning here's where you can run two versions of the same ad. I'm going to run a version that is worded a certain way and another one worded another way. This one's going to have this picture different, whereas this one will have that picture different. This is A/B testing. Version A, version B of an ad. Again, very advanced. I go in here to continue, and I'm going to get very similar sorts of things as before. I need to create an audience. How many am I reaching over here? I want them to go to a website. I need to put my website address. Is there an offer here? I need to set that up. <clears throat> Here's setting up my audience. <clears throat> Where do I want this to get placed? Automatic. Facebook will show it in the right place. Facebook owns Instagram. Did you know that? That means that I can actually have my money go twice as far. I can pay to set up an ad on Facebook, and basically for free, it will also go to Instagram. So if I've got an Instagram account for my Facebook business, I can also have an ad reach people on Instagram for the same cost. What's the budget? $20 a day. Again, they'll take however much you want to give them. We're in a lifetime budget, $350. I want this to happen for seven days. Another more advanced thing. So again, little too advanced, I, I think, to get started off as a beginner. Uh, but this is in their whole ad system here, and um, it's for free to set up, but then it costs you to how you want to reach your audience. Going back. Going back, uh, I do recommend to get started off instead with the with a little bit easier to use boosting than their whole ad system. And there's a whole help file that you can read how that fully works. You can look up videos how it works. You can go on Google search, find out how it works more completely. So general questions on this boosting or ads. Exactly. Exactly, because you don't know where to, where, how to spend your money yet, and in the real world, you know, a, an ad, a marketing firm, they have the disadvantage of, well, we know we've got to put billboards, but where do we put them for how long and all of that. So we have a great advantage here in that we have all of this data that people give to these networks willingly or unconsciously and so we're able to to reach them but the problem is well, where do I even start so yeah start off easy low budget general audiences then as I get the data so nothing meaning, meaningful will be here but let me look at insights in here it'll tell you that between this amount of time it'll tell you how many views you got and who clicked on what and it'll tell you the ones that were boosted gave you this result and the ones that weren't boosted gave you that result. As I then accumulate this for seven days, 28 days, then I get a bigger picture of, okay, this seems to work. Let me do that again. And now I'll spend $5 more. Or I'll target it even more. 
you can download this data and super analyze it in Excel and all of that or whatever other system you have but this is again Twitter has this Pinterest has this LinkedIn LinkedIn has it but it's really the best in Facebook yeah where do these ads actually show up I mean, they, they actually show up on the Well, like I mentioned right here, when you go to the uh, when a person is signed in and they're on their home screen, they're going to see the stuff of the friends and family they're connected to. Uh, but then they're going to see it here. They're going to see it perhaps on the side over here or in the middle of I'm browsing mindlessly and then something pops up and I see it here. So it's going to be in their home screen basically. And that's the same way with the boosted. Yes, exactly. It's just. Um, it, it would be great if it really, you know, pops up um, to uh, right on people's faces. Great for me as a as a business. Terrible for the user. They're gonna they're gonna hate that. That it just like pops up and notifies so much. I'm already notified about enough things. So at the moment, it is there that it's not really obtrusive, but it's there. It's up to you to create to attach a great photo to catches their attention and the text and such, and then they can follow through. Is there somewhere you can go to preview your ad or, or look at trends, see how it's showing up? Yep, when you are boosting it, um, the preview of, of it appears on the right. It's just that on mine it, it doesn't look obvious, but there's the preview right there. It's going to look something like that. Very boring. I didn't add a picture or anything, so that's what it looks like. Either on the desktop or on the mobile. So there we go. We really make cookies for it. Yes. <laughs> I know I need a nice cookie that I'm stretching out and the chocolate's falling out and everything. Good job, I diet. <laughs> <laughs> Let me mention one last thing that will end for the day regarding photos. Pixabay.com. Did I mention this before? No. This website, pixabay.com. Stunning free images. So you can, of course, do a Google search and look up cookies, and you'll get a billion results, literally. But the problem with doing a search for any photos on any search engine is you don't know if you're going to end up downloading someone's copyrighted image, and most likely you are. So unless you know how to search properly on the search engines, which I'm not going to diverge on, I would go to a search engine that specializes in showing you images that are safe for you, free stock photos and videos that are safe for you to use in your endeavors. You don't know if someone owns the copyright to that tasty cupcake you're trying to promote, then you get a letter from a lawyer saying you owe us damages. You used your fo you used our photo 10 times, here's a bill for $10,000. You instead you go to some place like Pixabay and here I'm going to search. I'm not going to get 10 million results of birthday cakes, I'm going to get 965, and I'm going to find the perfect one in here. And what's great about this site also is they're free for personal or uh, commercial usage. Sometimes there are, uh, sometimes there are results out there that say this photo is free to use for personal personal purposes but then you try to use it for your website where you're selling something and then now you've violated the terms so here we've got free download and what's even better is a lot of these are in ultra high quality this one that I'm about to download I can download it as large as 6,000 pixels that's as big as a like a poster size so I can use that on my poster at my restaurant finding images on a regular old Google search, you probably will run into copyrighted photos and low quality photos. This one is a nice high quality one. And so this person, Rita E, has put 1,930 images up there for free and I'll probably find the perfect image for what I need. And it ranges in quality of course. Like that one's not a great photo. These are nice, really nice. That one's not a good photo. It doesn't, that one doesn't inspire that I want to eat a pomegranate. This one's nice over here. This one's off center. This one's better. 
So pixelbay.com, I'll put it into my notes right here. So I'll say it's still, I'll say Facebook will do what it can to show your post to the right people. It's still up to you to create a compelling post, an actionable post, a post that gets you the result you're looking for. Good images are often the first step to good results. Pixabay.com for great free images. Why is it free? Uh, that's a network of people that have chosen to put out their work for exposure, for the kindness of their hearts, for whatever purpose. And uh, I've used it for years, and it's it's a great site. Are they credited on the pictures when they come up? Nope. It's going to depend on on the particular picture. You should read the little blurb about them, but most of them are just you know downloaded. This one, free for commercial use, no attribution required. They're not going to put their stamp on it, and they're not going to require you to even note where it came from. So I really like it. It's one of the most liberal uh, image sharing sites. No no credit needed. Um, free for commercial purposes. Most of them are like that. It doesn't have a million results of cakes. It only has 700. But I can probably find the perfect one of those 700. What I would say though, uh, let me say this again. Let's say birthday party. Uh, be careful here because I, I do a search I get a bunch of results cool I really like this one this one's so fun right here I want to download that one be careful because often the first results if all of this stuff is free how do they make money they have partnerships with other non free photo sharing sites the first results are often the sponsored ones I want that photo I'm gonna click on it it's gonna take me to some other site where there it might not be free and that's not what I wanted so usually the first row of results, skip those. It's everything after that are the ones that are free and safe for you to use. Yes? What would be the advantage for a photographer to post them their free photos on that site? It could be exposure. Uh, they could promote themselves uh, because a photographer puts um, an image and they've got then a profile here and they can write on their profile you know here's my free stuff but click here to go uh, check out my more professional stuff and so there is a way to connect with the photographer yes yep so this person CB uh, Aquiran um, they've got their photos here and they've got an about me right here um, so whatever they've written here they have an editor's choice so yeah and then right here you can follow them you can message them so just um, another avenue for exposure for the photographer to get more of themselves out and sometimes people also you know for the for the internet fame of it or the kindness of their hearts okay so I'm gonna end the main lecture final questions all right, so uh, next week when we come back, we will uh, cover um, Pinterest. Uh, we will see its pros and cons. We will see that it has similarities to Facebook or Twitter or, Fa or Google+, Plus, etc. We'll keep practicing. We'll talk about more content creation strategies. What we talk about Pinterest can apply back to Facebook. What we talk about Facebook can apply forward to Pinterest. And then we'll proceed. <laughs>